pictures, take video, use the hashtag. This is not about creative mornings. This is about the fact that we want to change the conversation about Charlotte. We are a creative community, and after you hear the media Galloway today, you will feel that in your bones. Share the message of Charlotte's creative. Good morning, everybody. Tim posted a great thing the other day. He said, to survive and thrive, you got to find your tribe. This is an opportunity to find your tribe, right? You can build your tribe 300 people at a time, no problem. And or, you can grow your tribe one person at a time, face to face, hearing their story. And it is such a privilege to have Davida here telling her story to all of you today. We figured we could, you know, maybe do a, a video to Paris. Felt more like a sigh of relief to me. Steve. <laughs> I love I love that moment. I can see the gears turning. Like, do I eh? or do I eh? And you yet, you yet, and I, I respect you for that. <laughs> okay. The next Queen City Quiz Show is June 24th. The Neighborhood of Elizabeth is hosting us, and it's going to be at St. Martin's Episcopal Church, which is going to be so cool. Um, Josh Bowerin, who runs that church, was actually one of our speakers here, and built in 1911, so much history in that neighborhood, and so it's going to be Elizabeth versus TBD, but uh, they're going to be playing for $1,500 uh, on behalf of a local charity, and um, it is the first true sort of installment of the Queen City Quiz Show, which is a summer series funded by the Knight Foundation. So please come and join us, qcquizshow.com, to learn more and to uh, get on the, on the list. It is such an honor to introduce you to this. Ladies and gentlemen, to see, here to speak to us on our global theme of survival, please welcome Charlotte's very own Davida Galloway, everybody. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? So, like, I never leave home without my stuff, right? <laughs> and I bet you don't either. We all have stuff that we carry from previous experiences, previous lessons, these things and that stuff, both tangible and intangible allows us to maneuver this thing called life, allows us to survive situations that seem unbearable, unrelentless, and unfair. Good morning. My name is Davida Galloway, and I am grateful, honored to be in front of you this morning. And while I am not a public speaker, please, let's be very clear. I am not a public speaker, but I'm thankful to Tim and Matt and Steve, as well as the entire Creative Mornings crew for having me. And for you guys, you guys look great this morning. Okay? Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. So, to be able to uh, overcome and survive is something I got, I got, I got honest, right? I'm the distinguished middle child of a disciplined, purple hearted Marine and a rebellious lady cat. You can call her a Black Panther. <laughs> but more than that, while journeying on this thing called life, I've been able to find something, or better yet, uncover something that's been a consistent cure. A familiar shoulder to lean on, a lifeline of sorts. I'll explain. It came like a thief in the night and decided to stay. Stomach pain, depressed, on again, off again, brief but brutal, doubled over, pleading for relief, tight, concentrate, breathe. One, two, three, breathe. Depressed, sweat, hot, twisting, moan, exhale, hungry, can't eat, loss of appetite, handful of grapes, Full. Mysterious black line and lips, tremendous weight loss, lethargic, hurt, vomit, 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 
constipation, blood. I was seven years old. No more sunshine, darkness. No more playing, darkness. Depressed, no bike, no hopscotch, no double dutch, no laughter. Sleep, lots of sleep. Please sleep. Stomach pain, fetal position. Concentrate, inhale, exhale. Tense, exhausted, make it stop. Just make it stop, please. Exhausted, parents confused, doctors perplexed, shots, exams, milk of magnesia, chalky, insure, chocolate, white gown, blood, can't eat, sleep, hurt, no school, depressed, darkness, moody, hospital, balloons, bears, exams, white gloves, probes, surgery, scar, diagnosed, Crohn's, chronic, forever, Endeavor, 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 endeavor. And I was eight years old. I was just eight years old. And no mommy and daddy, I don't want to, I don't want to go outside and play anymore. I don't want to go outside and play. I'd rather just, just stay inside and color. You see, I have the stuff right here. I have my stuff. I can just color all day because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt when I color. It doesn't hurt. And when I'm done, you can put it on the refrigerator like you did the last time. Okay, I'll be right here. Two years later, more stuff, life. Just like any other day that summer, my brother and I were dropped off at grandma's, the sole household where mommy and daddy would leave us when school was out. Being the matriarch of the family and having raised several, she was essentially the only caretaker we shared our sweet summer days with. Speaking of days, they would start early as our parents had to be at work promptly at eight. And for kids on their summer break, it was complete torture to hear those words, rise and shine. <laughs> of course, that first outcry of rise and shine didn't prompt anything but a yawn and a search for a better snoozing position. Nonetheless, and just as predictable, though 20 minutes later, our parents would swarm into the room, throw covers back, grab clothes, and physically push us into the car for yet another adventure at the house on the top of the hill. Here, at grandmother's, we were sure to be fed, and not just anything thrown together and remotely edible. No, it was quite the opposite. We were guaranteed a filling home-cooked meal that, in most cases, was quickly chased with a sound slumber. I see her. She's there in the kitchen, wiping her flour-covered hands before dropping new dollops of batter into the iron skillet. She then tends to the bacon that is sizzling on the eye in the left rear, checks the Aunt Jemima syrup that's just about ready on the eye in the right, and then fills glasses with sunny delight before calling out, breakfast, it'll be ready in a second. Here, at grandmother's, we were sure to be entertained, and not just by the big box that sat on a stand and was controlled by a smaller, more contained, battery-operated one. We found all kinds of ways to be occupied. I see it now, the grass. The lush green grass that was the exclusive site of our tumbling matches and many victories over fire doling dragons. The perky green grass that tickled our feet as we ran barefoot playing hide and seek. And who can forget the feel good, eat good cookouts which took place in all that greenness before chasing butterflies and fumbling while playing red light, green light. <laughs> right? <laughs> Here at grandmother's, we were sure to be protected. But this day, when it happened, was especially different. I see it now. I'm lying across my grandmother's monstrous Victorian bed, watching the channels flicker by, trying to find the one that housed my favorite shows. Unfortunately, I couldn't. Turning the tube off, knowing my cousin was downstairs, I descended and sat next to him on the couch. There we were, watching television, watching television, me and my cousin. 
Several moments passed, and I then laid my head on his lap, continuing to watch television there, downstairs. Watching television, me and my cousin, Several moments passed, and I recall him grabbing my hand, guiding my hand inside his pants, folding my hand onto his member. With his, with his hand on mine and mine on his member, he began to stroke up, then down. His hand, my hand, his member. With each upward motion, I felt gross, disturbed, guilty, ashamed, confused, but Sure, I didn't like what was happening. With each downward motion, I felt gross, disturbed, guilty, ashamed, confused, but certain I didn't like what was happening. Several unnerving moments passed, and I, no longer innocent, went upstairs to be protected by Grandma. I was 10. He was 22. There at grandmother's that summer when it happened. Hey, hey, mom and dad, um, can I get a sewing machine? Look, I have these sketches right here for you. That it's in my bag. I have these sketches. And I did stuff for men and for women. And I want to become a fashion designer. So um, can you teach me how to sew? Uh, we, we have to go to grandma's today. Okay, well, I'll just grab my stuff and I'll be ready to go. Several years later, I'm still surviving. As the cold, cruel, powerful, demeaning, humiliating handcuffs snapped and tightened against my flesh, he uttered those words, words I never thought would ever be directed towards me. Ms. Galloway? you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. He then proceeded to escort me out of the art supply room, which doubled as the space for my interrogation, into a sea of worried, confused, blank faced and open mouth onlookers, similar to you. <laughs> Once the familiar faces of coveted friends and hardworking employees and peers were now strange and foreign to me. I wanted to vanish, run, hide, escape, disappear, be plucked from that very moment. Unfortunately, the grounding cold steel that enslaved my hands, my being, and my freedom was a harsh reminder that I indeed was stuck, caught, and had to face this new reality. And reality was that my master's level education Affinity for all things fashionable, bubbly personality and percolating creativity cannot save me, cannot act as a lifeline and restore the me it has taken years to create. And at that moment, in my newly acquired state of being dependent, I follow the path of least resistance outlined for me by the boys in blue out of my eclectic place of unemployment <laughs> into the crisp air and seemingly calm streets of New York. An officer lowered me into the back of the patrol car, and as I sat, thought, and attempted to shield my face, was whizzed off to a world grossly unfamiliar. So, how did I get here? After receiving my master's in public health, I moved to New York where I attended Parsons School of Design. I was doing me, I was successful at work, I was successful at school, so I was happy, right? No. Lost is what I was. I thought I had to move from home to make something pop. I thought I had to have someone teach me something about something that's always been there. And while as frightening as it was, it took me facing a deep felony. It took me placing those desperate calls to my father, to my mother, and to my sister's residence. It took my mother flying up to New York to grab me and pack up my apartment while I sat in the middle of the floor in a daze. It took, me, it took her pushing me onto the plane. It took me landing back in Winston-Salem. 
It took me crying myself to sleep every night. It took me being locked in my room for days, for weeks, for months before I finally got back to me. And when it happened, one night I was sitting in bed and per usual, I started doodling. And those doodles turned into poems. Those poems turned into stories. That took me on a hunt, rummaging through the house, trying to find anything I could find. Photos, various images, paintings, diary entries, journal entries, you name it. All of that then turns into this. It's filled with my experiences. It's filled with my lessons. It's filled with my scraped knees. But it's also filled with my stuff, the stuff that gets me through the stuff that helps me survive. Art and creative expression, duh. <laughs> you can't separate the two. Like, you can't remove art from my being. You can't remove self-expression from my soul. It is me. I am that. It's always been, for, it's always been there for me, that constant cure, that familiar shoulder to lie on, cry on, if necessary, a lifeline. And art and creative expression has literally saved my life <laughs> plenty of times. It has literally, I'm sorry, it has literally saved my life plenty of times. And if it's my rescue, then it's got to be the rescue for others. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so trust me, I know a little bit about survival. So with that said, <sighs> this place was created. This home was created. This phenomenon was created with my brother. What's up? Um, some of you have seen it, some of you have ventured in, some of you may have heard of it, some of you have heard about it, but uh, what, 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 what we call it? Uh, I think we should call it Dump and Swat, is what I think we should call it. Okay. Um, I say that because it's genuine, right? Yeah. It's just us doing what we do. It's not contrived, it's not trying too hard, it's genuine. And we know we can trademark that. I doubt if that's Taken, right? <laughs> Dump and swat? All right, word. Okay, Dump and swat. And what are we going to do again? What are we going to do? We'll figure it out, like we always do, right? Truth is, the community figured it out for us. We filled a void. We met a need. We became their home. We became their confidence. We supported their flight and their figuring it out. We allowed them to trust that thing that's always been there, passions. We became their yes and their platform, and we do so by housing local designers, local brands. We do so by allowing artists to fill our walls with various works. We do so by allowing our venue to be used for various events. You want to do it? Let's get it. You thinking about it? You're a little scared? Nah, let's get it. Let's do it. But, more, but most importantly, we created a culture in that box. We became therapists and saved lives in that box. We added to their survival kit. And we did so for years, being aware of what was happening around us in Noda and in other areas of the city. You see it, venues are closing. You see it, rent is increasing, forcing different organizations and businesses out. And after five years, that thing came knocking on our door and we were forced to close. We were forced to close. 
Don't we matter? Like, don't we matter? Now, that question supersedes Duff and Swat. It's literally questioning the survival of the art and creative community here in Charlotte. Our homes, our gathering places are being taken from us, and you're literally threatening our livelihood and therefore our lives. So again, I ask you, don't we matter? I think I would think so. I would think so. So our crew, we matter to them at least because we literally have gotten calls and text messages like every day since we closed. Like and that was October 31st last year. We've literally gotten text messages. Let me see if I can just pull one random up. I know I do something in here. Let's see. I'm not gonna call the name. But uh, let's see. You and your brother are how I learned the culture in Charlotte, but you knew that. I'm glad others will know soon. By the way, when are y'all opening? Um, like literally, niggas need to pay homage to you. <laughs> that was real. That's a, that's a real text. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Yet another. What's this date? Mm, we can go further back. Uh, Tuesday, May 9th, 324. Hey, when do y'all open for business? Hmm. Monday, May 15th, 1023. Hey, do you think your space will be ready for a June 24th event? I mean, it really goes on and on. Wednesday, May 17th. You think it'll be, be ready? When the hell are y'all opening? Yo, seriously. Every day we get text messages, emails, it's needed. So, what can we do, right? What can we do as a community? What can we do as a people? Well, based on our experience at Duff and Swat, two things. While we were located in Noda, which is, I guess, the arts district here in Charlotte, um, where people, more open-minded people frequent that neighborhood, right? People who choose to color with all of the crayons in the box, <laughs> supposedly. However, people who frequented our studio, our space, looked like us. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying it's a thing. Now, I know that we tend to gather with people who look like us or in groups that are similar to us. However, if we don't challenge that, then we remain stagnant, and you won't be able to enjoy the beautiful multifaceted art scene that could be Charlotte. Like, like, seriously. To put it simply, to put it simply, you missing out on our dope shit and we missing out on yours. <laughs> seriously. Sorry, Dad, I know you in the audience. <laughs> uh, I, I can't tell you how many times we've experienced people walking by like, literally, they would walk by several times, peer through the window, but they, won't, they would never cross the threshold. And I'm like, what, what's going on? Like, why won't you cross the threshold? And I mean, I guess it may be a thing of being comfortable or feeling uncomfortable, but when you're talking about the survival of a community, when you're talking about the survival of a culture, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Please, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Erase the divide. Erase the color divide. It's bigger than black and white. Living is much better when you can appreciate every color. When you can appreciate every color. <laughs> Number two, the second thing you can do, whether it's buying and investing in art, whether it's paying for specific services, or whether it's providing grant money to fund different projects or ideas, where are the dollars at? <laughs> where are the dollars at? Okay. In order for our art and creative community to survive, artists must survive. One begets the other. There's no reason for an artist to have to work four and five jobs during the week 
to then only engage in their craft or passion on the weekends. There's no reason for that. Our worth is much more valuable. Our work, of course, is much more valuable, because some of you get it. Um, you use our works to entice people to come to the city to live here. Who wants to move to a place where there's no culture, no scene, nothing's popping? No one wants to do that. No one wants to be a part of that. So you use us for that. But what's ironic is that those newcomers who are coming to the city, they're moving into homes. They're moving into condos where galleries once lived. They're moving into spaces that was once filled with people, groups of people, creating magic. Our homes, our places are being taken from us. And honestly, I hope that the, their spirits literally haunt everyone who lives in those condos. I swear I do. I swear I do. Like, seriously. Like, seriously, I want them to be able to, like, turn on the light and run to the bathroom before. Like, I want them to have to, have to do that every night. Like, you have to turn on the light, beeline to the bathroom, come back, because you're that scared. You're that scared. You're that scared. <laughs> you're that scared. Funding organizations, funding organizations. I might get some, hmm, okay. Funding organizations, it's partially your fault. I say that because you have all the power and you only seem to support a certain level of artistry, some of you. I challenge you to challenge your criteria. Yes, support the artist who has initials behind their name but also support the artist who is trying to build his or her name. Yes, support the artist who has works in corporate buildings. However, also support the artist who is building. Support their flight. Become their wings. Become their yes. We know several artists who just need that yes. Just give them a yes. Magic will happen. Give them a yes. I can't tell you how many times we've applied for grants, hoping, wishing, praying for a yes. Any yes. Where is the yes? You know? But as survivors do, we get up, we grab our stuff, and we keep it moving. Guys, listen, our new location of Dup and Swat opens in a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. 2521, the plaza is the address. Please come and support. And though we're in a neighborhood where gentrification is still very real, we may be forced out again in another five years. In the meantime, please come out. Please support. Please show your face. Cross the threshold. Please, cross the threshold. One more thing before I leave. You know, it's funny. When queried about my degrees in public health, um, I, would, I would often mention about how I'm not, no, I'm not using that degree. I'm not using that degree, but truthfully, I am. I'm ensuring individuals are able to express themselves, are able to create, and genuinely pursue their passions, their point, their purpose. Doing so, literally saves lives. <laughs> Trust me, I know a little bit about it. A lot about it, actually. My name is Davida Galloway. I'm the co-owner of Dup and Swat, and I'm a survivor. And we assist others in doing the same. Thank you. <laughs> Davida Galloway, everybody. So I just have a comment. Mm -hmm. I met Davida a few years ago when she costumed a show I did. Hey. And I don't think she realizes how much she's inspired me to be myself all the way, every day from afar. So I just want to tell you, I appreciate you. I don't get to say it, I drop in when you were open. I've been anticipating a new open, but I watch you because you have the freedom to be yourself and have allowed so many to do the same thing. And for that, 
You're wonderful. I adored you anyway, but I adore you more. Thank you.